Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Becky Safe. It's been a hot minute. I never say that, but it has. It's been a while since I've done a sound design video on this channel. Longtime viewers may have been wondering where those videos have gone. I've switched up the content on the channel, so expect to see DJing, streaming, insights into my personal life. I did a studio tour recently, which you can check out. But today we're going to jump into some of the most classic sound design. Why? Why? Always ask yourself, why? Because it's still the most used today. What I'm about to show you is so relevant to today's sound. Not only that, it's easy to understand. And the best part about it is it's absolutely free to create. <laughs> Let's jump into Vital. Vital is a free VST, virtual studio technology. It's absolutely free. You can download this and you don't need to download the extra packs. What we're about to create is a classic sound and the classic sounds come from the basic shapes. And these are the waveforms that were on hardware way back in the day. And they are therefore the waves that have established the sounds that we know and love in electronic music and modern music. And so they're still used today to create those same sounds. So we're gonna be using the square wave. We're also going to then make this wide. And in order to do that, we increase the unison voices. By increasing the copies of waves, we then send them out to the side by detuning them, and you can adjust the detune here. The wider it goes, the more detuned it's going to sound, but the wider it's going to feel. So get a nice balance between the two by increasing and decreasing your detune. <laughs> Once you have the sound nice and wide, we want to be creating a pluck shape. We want short, sharp attacks on our keys. When the hand goes down on the keys, we want to feel that impact. And you might think that the best way to do this would be to drag envelope one down and then you have a pluck sound, which is nice. But envelope one is what's known as the common amplitude envelope. And that means that it controls the overall output of the VST, which you might not want because it cuts off the basic shape altogether. So instead of using envelope one and instead of using envelope two, we're actually going to come down to LFO one because this is gonna give us more control in envelope mode. So come to trigger and switch it to envelope. And now you have an LFO that acts like an envelope. We're going to create the same shape. It's gonna be a pluck shape. You can adjust here your frequency, which is the speed at which it moves through this envelope, but it's in fractions of BPM value. So you can come here and switch it to seconds, and now you can adjust it in a more precise amount. We're going to add this LFO one now to filter one to the frequency cutoff. So drag it and drop it over the wave in the middle, and then you can adjust the amount of attenuation here and adjust the frequency here to get that pluck feeling that you want. And then if you do want to control the overall volume of the output of this VST, adjust the envelope here so that if you want it to just cut off instantly, you can have a really fast release and it will stop playing immediately. We can hear there, it's giving a bit of a click. So have some release. And if you want it to ring out a little bit longer, you can have a longer release. Delays and reverbs send wide sounds into a wide space. Come to the effects tab and activate the delay and the reverb and you can reorder these sounds as well so if you want the reverb to go into the delay just switch it so that it goes before the delay reduce the mix down on both of them because we don't want it to be too much switch the delay into stereo so that we have a stereo delay and reduce the size and the feedback we don't want it to be too much right too much of delay and reverb in all of the sounds in your project is going to make it sound congested muddy and messy so just don't overdo it. That's a very typical, simple 
patch that would have been created back in the day and probably created even today because it's effective and it's what people recognize. But we can go one step further with this. We can add oscillator to, and instead of using a basic shape, we can now use this oscillator to layer our sound that we've created and have a bit more interest in a digital way. So come down to glonk and pick a waveform. That's a much more digital waveform. Now we could leave this at the same octave, but we don't want it to be competing for frequency space at our oscillator one octave. So press shift and up and transpose so that it's an octave above. That way it takes it out of the way and actually makes it act like a higher frequency layer. This is a single waveform at the moment, so we're going to increase the unison again and let's go to eight voices and we're going to adjust the detune just like before to make it wide. The output of this is going into filter two, of which there isn't one, so we're going to send this into filter one. Adjust the level amount because you don't want this to be dominating over our main oscillator here. This is the main sound in the square wave. I checked behind the scenes on the YouTube statistics and I noticed that 60% of you that watch my content are not subscribed. So, you know what I'm about to ask you to do? Look, by hitting the subscribe button, it'll help me to improve and make better content in the future. So I ask you this favor, if you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and thank you. So now we have our patch set. So we're going to add in our chords. If you don't know how to write chords, Ableton has the major seventh chord MIDI plugin. If you drag that onto your MIDI track before the VST, it now turns it from this to this. So you have a chord that is there for you. Let's go into the MIDI clip and we're going to set the scale of A major. And now all we need to do is create our chords, but they're going to be just single notes. Add in notes like this. Once you're happy with the pattern that you've created to further add interest over time, we can add in some automation. Let's automate the frequency so that it lengthens and shortens over time. To automate a parameter in a third party VST, click on the triangle and press configure. It's going to open up Vital and then whatever you click on, it will show in the configure section. So now we click on the frequency and as we exit, it has now configured the frequency. So now we can automate this. If we click on it here and press the A key, it now comes up in the drop down menu of Vital. And we can adjust this over time so that it opens and closes. <laughs> change your sound as well, cycle through the wavetables. You don't need to stick with this acid rock wavetable. If you'd like to see more videos on sound design, I have an entire sound design section on my channel. Please check it out. I also have links to my website and my courses below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button. And if you got something out of it and you'd like to let me know your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you. Please drop a comment in the comment section. And if you're not yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Until then, I will see you soon, either on Twitch, on Instagram, or when I post more content on here. My name is Becky Safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.